Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. All right, guys, now we're going to do this problem that says the belt passing over the pulley subjected to two forces, F1 and F2, each having a magnitude of 40 newton meters. So let's say F1 magnitude is equal to F2 magnitude, which is equal to 40 newton meters. I mean, newtons. I don't know why I keep saying newton meters. Now, F1 is going straight down in the negative k direction. Replace the forces by an equivalent resultant force and couple moment at point A, express the resulting Cartesian vector form. And you gotta take that theta, which is right here, is equal to 45 degrees. Okay, this problem can be a little bit intimidating, but it's really not all that hard. First, we gotta find that the Cartesian vector form of both vectors. So, you know that the resultant force is equal to F1 plus F2. We know that F1, let me make sure, yes, sorry about that. F1 is equal to negative 40 in the k direction because it's going straight down in the c-axis. Now we need to find F2. And we're going to do that with some simple trigonometry, which I'm going to draw a triangle right here and right here. I'm going to draw this triangle and let me draw that triangle too, which is, this is straight, this is straight. And hopefully now you guys can see it. Now I'm going to redraw the triangle here so you guys see it a little better. This is the straight. Now you know that this is theta, therefore this is theta, you know that this is 90 degrees, you also know that this is 90 degrees, so let's call this beta. This is 90, and you know that all the angles inside a triangle add up to 180, so 180 minus 90, which is this triangle right here, is equal to 90, so you know that 90 is equal to theta plus that, right? Therefore, you know that this is theta. So let me redraw the triangle one more time, how it looks with the only things that we care about. We know that this is theta, you know that this is F2. Perfect. Now F2 is sitting in the CY plane, so it has no X component. You know this is the Y component, let's call it F2Y, and you know that this is the C component, let's call it F2C. And since F2 is going that way, F2Y is going that way, and F2C is going that way. F2 is equal to 40 newtons, and theta is equal to 45 degrees, right? So, F2 on the Y is equal to F2 cosine of theta, and you know it's going in the negative J direction, so it's negative 28.3 newtons in the J, and F2 C is F2 sine of theta, it's going in the negative k direction, so it's negative 28.3 newtons in the k direction. So let's write those up here, minus 28.3 in the j minus 28.3 in the k. So to find the resultant force, we just got to add F1 and F2. And when you add them all up, you get negative 28.3 in the j minus 68.3 in the k. 
this is in newtons. I hope you understand the basic trigonometry that we did here, but basically this is theta, because this is theta. Now let me turn the page because you know how messy I get with matrices. So, sum of the moments at A. Sum of the moments at A is equal to R1 cross F1 plus R2 cross F2. So now we have to find R1 and R2 because we already have the Cartesian vector form of F1 of F2, which is found then. What is R1 and R2? R1 is from A, since we're calculating from point A, this vector right here. And this is R1. R2 is this vector right here, which you need to calculate with some basic trigonometry also. So looking it from that way, this is an I. I swear it's an I, guys. Then if you look at the pulley straight down the x-axis, then you see that this is F2 coming out. And basically, this is the point that we're trying to find. This is the c-axis and this is the y-axis. This is the center, right? This is the radius. The radius is 0.08 meters because I converted this to meters. Remember, 80 millimeters is equal to 0.8 meters. In the case of 300 is 0.3 meters. Sorry, that's not 0.8, that's 0.08. Don't make that mistake, guys. 0.08. So this is the C component and this is the Y component. And with some basic trigonometry, you gotta find that. We have this angle, which is theta. So let me redraw this triangle. You know how I love to redraw triangles. This is theta, this is the radius, this is the Y, this is the C. You have that the radius is equal to 0.08 meters. So you can find C and Y with some basic trigonometry. So R2, because this is what we're trying to find, R2. R1 is super simple to find. R2 in the C is equal to 0.08 cosine of 45 degrees, which is equal to 0 0.057. I converted it to meters, don't forget. R, oops, R2 in the Y is equal to, ah, and this is positive because it's going straight up. See, it's going up. This is uh, R2 in the Y, which is minus, because it's going in the negative Y direction, 0 0.08 sine of 45 which is equal to minus 0 0.057. And this is in meters because I converted the millimeters to meters. Okay, so we have R2C and R2Y. So R2 is equal to minus 0.3 in the I, minus 0 0.057 in the J, plus 0 0.057 in the K. Perfect. And finding this vector, which is very simple to find because it has no C component, you literally go back minus 0.3 in the I, plus 0.08 in the J, and nothing in the K. So now that we have R1 and R2, we can find the cross products by doing my crazy matrix that I always do. Let me add one and do it here. Perfect. So. R1 cross F1 is equal to I, J, K minus 0 0.3, 0 0.08, 0, 0, 0, minus 40. Rewrite first and second column. If you watch my videos, you should have mastered matrices by now. Now we're going to do our positive diagonals, 
positive, positive, positive. The first one is 0 0.08 times minus 40. That's minus 3.2 in the I. Second one is 0, third one is 0. Now negative diagonal 1 is 0. Negative diagonal 2 is 0. The negative diagonal 3 is negative times negative times negative, which is a negative, and it's 40 times 0 0.3, which would make it minus 12 in the J. Beautiful. We have our first vector. R2 cross F2 is equal to IJK. R2 is minus 0.3. Minus 0 0.057, 0 0.057, 0, minus 28.3, and 28.3, also negative for F2. Yes, because it's going, F2 is going down, and it's going back. So it's negative, negative, perfect. I'd like to check my work as I'm explaining it to you guys. So rewrite first and second column. We got first positive diagonal. This is a long one, so let me write it down here. 1.61 in the I. Second positive diagonal is zero. Third positive diagonal is plus 8.49 in the K. Negative diagonal number one is zero. Negative diagonal number two is in the I, which is also 1.61 in the I. And negative diagonal number three is in the j which is minus 8.49 in the j because it's three negatives so when you add all the i's all the j's and all the k's you get 3.22 i minus 8.49 in the j plus 8.49 in the k and this is for r2 cross f2 And this is R1 cross F1. So, another page. Lots of pages in this one. Sum of the moments is equal R1 cross F1 plus R2 cross F2, which basically means that you have to add the two Cartesian vectors that we found in the previous page together, which is just some simple math. And the final answer would be 20.49, this is negative, in the J, plus 8.49 in the K, because the I's cancelled each other out. So this is the final answer for the moment being created around point A by these two forces acting on the pulley. And let me find the first one that we calculated, which is this one. Oops. The resultant force, final answer.